So if you saw the last video, you saw that I purchased a Japanese new 3DS XL and I did some upgrades to it where I replaced the D-pad and the thumbstick to make it all functional. And now we have a functioning 3DS. There's only one problem. The problem is I can't read that because I'm not Japanese. So what we're gonna do in today's video is jailbreak this thing. Now I have done videos on the PSPs and how to jailbreak those. Those seem to be a little bit more straightforward than this. This one has a few more steps. So I'm going to actually link the website that I'm using. I probably won't speak to you step by step, but I will show you what I'm doing. You just know that if you guys want an in-depth review, let me know, but this is just gonna be my process of jailbreaking it. Show you guys how simple it really is and then moving on from there. So why don't we get started? For this, you will need a micro SD card, a way to connect it to the computer. Honestly, that's it, a computer. Let's get started. A few moments later. Okay, we are actually gonna change the format. Before, I think I planned on showing you guys how I did the hack and everything, and I'm not gonna do that. There's plenty of videos, better videos than I can make because that's what I try to do. I try to make one and I ran into some issues. So what I'd rather make this video about is post hack and the difficulties I ran into and what I suggest to you that worked for me. So let me start off by saying I went to the 3ds.hack website and they have a nice web page with instructions step by step, all the downloads you'll need, and it's pretty straightforward. But that didn't work for me. And there may be a few reasons why, maybe some of the reasons I'm not sure of. So these hacks are very in the moment, right? What I mean by that is if I do one now in August of 2024, it might be different in December or might be different for February of 2025. So it's important to check it and be up to date. And sometimes they just might not work. You might just have a wrong reason. You might just have the wrong method and that kind of stops you where you are. And that's what I ran into. I followed a step-by-step, -step, very easy to follow. You can always, and I do suggest you always watch a YouTube video beforehand. Watch multiple so you get the general gist of what you're going to be doing on the console. And that's just good to know because you might be you know, doing something you're not aware of and you make a mistake and it breaks the console, which is a possibility. So while I was doing that, I followed a step-by-step -step and I kept on getting to the point where you have to access a web page and after you access it, it's supposed to launch an exploit and you're supposed to see all these colors. But I would only see like one or two colors, it would stay on red. And I troubleshooted a lot. Is it troubleshot? Troubleshot, troubleshooted. I tried to figure out a lot and I couldn't get the result that I was supposed to get. So what I did from here is I went to YouTube because YouTube's a great resource for learning things. That's why I learned almost everything that I do on this channel, especially shooting the channel. I went on YouTube and I went ahead and looked for somebody in my situation who was trying to hack a Japanese 3DS and I found one. I found a video by someone named Retro Boy. I'll go ahead and link his channel in the description but this guy is, go support him. Like he, he helped me out and he keeps on pumping these different guides out. There are guys that are straight to the point, you know, hey, you want this, go do that. You want this, go do that. There's no 25 minute video of here's what this is and here's what this is. Now, that being said, it's always nice to watch those videos so you get the gist of what's happening and why you're doing something. But I was trying to do this for about 30 minutes straight and it just wouldn't work. So I was like, you know what? Take it out of my hands. So I followed his video and instead of going through the 3DS website, the hack website, where you kind of drag this and then do this and then drag this and then do this. He compiled everything together. I'm not sure if he did it or a different community member. They just compiled a big download. Uh, it's not malware. You just put it on your SD card, plop it in, and that's essentially it. From there, you do everything else on the console, and it made everything very easy. With that being said, I do have to mention that I initially started doing this on a MacBook, and I don't know how the MacBook file structure is, but I think it is different, and it, the SD card reads differently when it's in there. So. It didn't work on Mac. And I was like, you know what? Let me try it on my other laptop, which is Windows. I tried it on there and it worked fine. There was no issues at all. I'm almost thinking that the 3DS hack website might have also worked just with Windows, but I didn't try it with Windows. So putting that out there, that uh, if you are doing it on Mac, the process is different. Retro Boy actually has a video on how to do it on Mac. And I saw that after I hacked this. But yeah, the process is pretty straightforward. I did go ahead and region change this to the UK, I believe, or Europe. Europe and North America are both region free. So it doesn't really matter what you change it to because when you hack it, you can go ahead and just region unlock it. And that's one thing that Retro Boy did too, is the exploit that came with that download 
everything was in it. The, the region change was built into it and there was no going back and forth and adding files. There's many different ways to do this, but that's just the way he did it, it's the way I did it, and it's working. It was pretty straightforward and simple. So there's a lot you can do with this hack. A jailbroken new 3DS, even any 3DS, is pretty dope. It gives you the ability to play game backups, to download third-party apps and games, get a lot of stuff for free in terms of like themes and stuff. Uh, I mean, you can see right here if the flash isn't bad, but you know, I have a theme going on. I have some game backups here. So I have Super Smash, but I went ahead and I have a backup of it. That way I can update it because when you do put a cartridge in here, you have to enable that. You, can, uh, you can't really update it because it needs the eShop for some reason. I don't know if that's obvious. It needs the eShop and the eShop's closed, so that wouldn't really work. I would suggest if you have a game, just download it from the eShop and then go ahead and down the updates from the HOP as well. So what you can do with 3DS, and I'll show you on the screen as well. Again, I'm not going very in depth. You have multiple applications on here that really give you a big range of customization. You have the HOP where you can download, you know, games, themes, virtual console stuff, which is really nice. You have a theme manager. You have essentially a third party storefront. You can even download Twilight, which is a separate video I'll do that allows you to play DS games on here. And you also have the ability to just look through your SD card, make changes. That's something that I guess a lot of people don't think about when they hack this stuff. It's like, okay, well, if I don't want to take the SD card out every time, let me look through here and make changes if I need to. One thing I will say, is it's very important to make a backup of your system because you might break your system. If you go in here and just delete a random file in the file manager, you might break it. And that backup is nice because you can just restore it from the backup. But overall, I'm not gonna make a very long video. This was 100% worth it for an afternoon of learning and maybe an additional afternoon of cleaning and replacing parts. I have a pretty good new 3DS XL. The only thing that drives me crazy is like the hinge wobble, but again, I'm seeing online that it's normal. I don't care if it's normal. I, I'd rather have it not wobble. So I've tried like shoving stuff in here. I really just don't want to take the hinge out because it's not broken. It still, it still snaps. I'm just kind of weird with it. Yeah, that's it guys. That is uh, me jailbreaking a new 3DS XL in 2024. And this has brought the 3DS back to life. Not that it ever died, but I mean, Nintendo did kill it. This still makes it relevant and it's a great pocketable console to take out with you, which I plan on doing and I'll probably show it in the video next. If you guys like the video, please drop a like. If you want to see more videos in the future, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.